Hello, I am Surya Subedi. I am Professor of International Law at the University of Leeds. I am also the author of the study guide on International Economic Law for the external LLM program of the University of London. Uh, the course that I designed and conceived and developed consists of uh, four sections. Section A deals with the evolution of international economic law and fundamental principles of international economic law. Section B deals with which I call international law of development. Basically, what the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund and other regional development banks do in regulating international economic activities of states. N section uh, uh, C deals with the regulation of international investment or which you call foreign investment and section D deals with international law of trade. When I say international law of trade, I mean public international law of trade, basically focusing on WTO law. Some 26 agreements or so are there in existence under the auspices of the WTO and analysis of the core provisions of the WTO agreements and recent developments and my own critique is not just a summary of the 26 or so treaties, but it is a critical analysis of the treaties. That is what I do in section D. These are the four sections which cover international economic law. Basically, the course is designed to introduce you to international economic law as a distinct discipline within public international law. International economic law, in my opinion, is a member of the family of public international law. So, my course begins with a basic introduction to international economic law, some principles of public international law, for instance, how treaties are concluded, what is the difference between ratification and signature? What is the legal impact of resolutions of international organizations such as the United Nations or the World Bank or even the WTO, so called soft law principles and hard law principles? I cover both of them in the study guide. As a practicing barrister uh, of the Middle Temple, I have some practical insight into the interplay between law, economics and politics of international relations. The aim of the course is to give a critical introduction to the workings of international economic law in the contemporary world. If somebody were to uh, advise a government department or a uh, an international organization or a client or working in house uh, for a big multinational corporation or even practicing as a lawyer. What are the uh, complexities you are likely to encounter and how you would handle those uh, cases? Um, for instance, if somebody were to walk through your door, if you were a lawyer, somebody walked through your door for instance, a company director asking for advice on um, the laws and regulations relating to foreign investment. Suppose they are willing to commit certain investment abroad to a foreign country and then they want to know from you what are the legal uh, processes they should follow and what uh, other considerations they should have before deciding to invest that money into that country. Then in that case, how would you go about advising the company director? For instance, to begin with whether there is a bilateral treaty between the country where they are investing and the country where the investor is residing, between investor country and investor receiving country. If there is no bilateral investment treaty, for instance, what, how would you go on? Um, uh, establishing what the applicable law would be, then you will go on to look at general principles of international law following basically article 38 of the statute of the International Court of Justice, in which there are uh, a list of sources of international law 
you would be expected to apply those sources of international law. That is just an example I am giving you. Uh, the course is about the basic principles of international economic law section A. Let me tell you a couple of other things about the course um, section A. Section A deals with the evolution of international economic law. How we have come to this stage? Uh, in the 1960s, 70s and 80s, there was a flurry of activities within the United Nations and within other international economic institutions. And on the basis of their activity, there is now a sizable body of international economic law. And what are these principles? What are the basic instruments from which these principles flow? And how these principles are working in today's world? That is the focus of uh, 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 section A, in which the uh, evolution, when talking about evolution, I go um, way back uh, to the peace of Westphalia. And when nation states started to engage in economic relations, when business actors from different countries, individuals or companies crossed the borders, went to other countries, the expansion of basically the f initial phase, if you like, the initial phase of globalization. Many people think that globalization began with the establishment of the United Nations or real globalization began with the fall of the Berlin Wall or the collapse of communism in Europe in 1990, but in my opinion globalization began when people and business organizations crossed their own borders and went to other countries to engage in trade and investment relations. So, I survey the evolution of international economic law from that time onwards and focus on the recent developments, basically those that have taken place since the establishment of the United Nations. On the basis of a whole gamut of uh, a raft of international treaties and soft law instruments, declarations of the United Nations or international diplomatic conferences, for instance, the Rio conference in 1992 um, or uh, Monterey conference of 2001. How these various declarations have had an impact on the conduct of economic relations between states? What is the law? applicable here to different types of possible disputes between states, between companies and states or between companies themselves. What are the uh, likely disputes and what would be the law applicable to, to those disputes? So, it is a basically a focus on legal techniques, legal principles and legal techniques designed to resolve those conflicts or disputes between companies or between companies and governments. As I said in the beginning, this is a public international law, uh, um, uh, part of public international law uh, course which govern, which focuses on international economic relations. So, that is what we call it international economic law. It is not about private international economic law, but it is about public international economic law. I hope you have got some understanding of the entire course on international economic law. Thank you.